see in a pocket of the country. So it'll be like this. UOTR. He knows he's going to get butt if the low says something like uh, pick up in Fontana, opening ended in Houston. Or Dallas. <laughs> so he knows if some bitch is open. So what he going to do is he going to hot boy run that bitch all the way to freaking Houston, not turn it in. And he's going to push that zero one to 2300 out for him to get some butt. And that way he hasn't really lost any money. And if he's a real dude, he gonna get butt in the truck. <laughs> oh, no, I gotta get a hotel. Shit, don't start that shit, bro. Well, oh, yeah. I spent like seven, eight thousand dollars on hotels one year, man. And what I had to realize is I don't want to be in the truck no more. You gotta, you got to, and that's, it's interesting because we talked, we were gonna talk about this before. You were saying about knowing when to, when to transition from hotel yeah. to local. Yeah, I, I think my year really was about year six or seven hmm. but, but i stayed another three four year so what crazy. what led you to that mindset of of recognizing you needed to make a change the way i was handling my money to offset the fact i didn't want to be in the trouble the hotels you know mm-hmm. i was staying at hotels even if a if a load was too loose i would get a hotel mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm i get here I try to drop the load off and they say, oh, this ain't here to 1400 tomorrow. I'm there 1400 that day. I'm like, all right, cool. And I go get a hotel. Mm. At that point, I'm getting hotels for no reason. Right. So I said, why am I getting hotels for no reason? I don't want to be in the truck. I'm trying to create a home life feel over the road. I'm trying to be in a place, take a shower, chill. I'm trying to do it. Not to mention, I'm not even discussing with you the, the Toros I bought. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm riding around in ranges and shit in Texas. Oh man, I'm riding around in ranges in in in, in Georgia and in, in VA. I go back to VA, man. I get a coupe. I'm getting SS Camaros and shit. I'm just living the dream. You hear me? I'm just doing my thing. But I'm looking at. I go home with nine and leave with twelve hundred dollars. Jeez. So See, that's that. that's something to talk about too. Can we talk about the discipline as far as? the trap that we fall into as truckers as far as lifestyle renting. Oh my gosh, that's big. Because I tell you what really killed it. The hotels were bad enough. Hmm. What killed them, and I didn't follow this because I prefer hotels over right. Airbnbs, but Airbnbs took a lot of guys out. Oh man, yeah. Because dudes were basically had a standing appointment. They would they wouldn't get an apartment. They would have a standing appointment with an Airbnb when they come home. Yeah. So we'll go like this. They will get an Airbnb in some area you can't really afford for like, we'll call it $1,200 in their home time. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they would extend it. So they would just come home. And when they would come home, they would get the Airbnb for $1,200. Yeah. They would get the Dope Boy Toro for, we'll call that five. <sighs> They're going to go out and eat to the tune of six. They're going to trick to the tune of five. They're going to get new clothes to the tune of five. Right? And, yeah. and, and, that was the deal every time they come home. What what they're not realizing is that would be sustainable if trucking, if you had a plug into some freight that was stable. So when they would come off of this, they'd spend 3000 at the crib. They would come off, get in the truck, turn the key on. They get the three lights of death. Oh, <laughs> check engine, engine stop, D rate or the death light. So now when they go back, the, the truck will take them a thousand miles away, then shut down. And now they're stuck in a hotel for a week, wherever they got stuck at. You know, then they get back on it. The, the, the DM is, is, is daisy chaining the loads. Yeah. You're not the, you're not the flavor of the month. And you <laughs> have a, 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 a brutal month. And after a while, you'll do that for a while. After a while, you'll just get tired of fucking do that. That's why most of the truckers that do well are cheap. Hmm. That is why when truckers look at you being flashy, they say a negative thing to you because it's stupid. You can't, you, you, you're not in the position. Oh, I make this kind of money, but see that you don't though. You do until you don't, you get paid as you go. You can't say you make anything up. I told you the biggest thing that hurt people on YouTube is saying a week. Hmm. That is not a lie. It's inaccurate. Yeah. We're just used to saying what you make a week, but th- we don't make anything a week in trucking. 
Even hourly dudes don't make anything a week because weather can stop that. Oh, absolutely. Or just getting sick. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I was I was sick about a month ago and that cost me three hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a day. So exactly. So why would the oh I make this a week? The thought process is I'm gonna spend this, I'm gonna have fun. You only live once, I'll make it back. But you don't know that you're gonna make it back. And when you don't make it back, then you're you're fucked. Another thing too is scheduled home time is a big one. Oh, OTR drivers cannot schedule home time. If you're here to make money, you can't. Your money tells you when you can go home. Yeah. Oh, the way the old head told me, when you get ten thousand dollars, go home. And however that long that is interesting. I I never I never thought about that. So when you get if you're a lease driver, when you get ten thousand dollars, go home and set a budget when you're home. So I got made ten thousand dollars. I'm gonna go home and spend two. Okay, twenty percent. Yeah. So when you you down to I'm about seventeen hundred dollars, you're leaving yeah. tomorrow. Hmm. But see, people weren't doing that. They were scheduling their home time as a hard time. Thirty days. I'm back this day, regardless of what happened. They know they're coming back in that four weeks. Yeah. I mean, I unless I just unless things just absolutely went terrible, I did have a hard set schedule. I'd stay out twenty one to at max thirty days. Yeah. That 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 right there means you're on your way out of OTR. You're, yeah. you're done. That means you, if you're making schedules like that, you prefer to be home than the road. Hmm. And you say, oh, well, most people prefer to be, and that's not true. That's not true. There's drivers that stay out a year straight. Yeah, couples that, that don't go home for two years at a time. Or they're just like, yeah, we got a house, but we really live on the road, so we're probably going to get rid of our house. <laughs> right. And that's usually how people get super sleepers. They sell their house. Yeah. And they take the $50,000, and they go in there, and they get a super sleeper. So they give them a super... Th- 98% of all super sleepers are leased. Yeah. Because you yeah, don't want cash out on a, on a $400,000 super sleeper. You don't want to own them because you have semi truck bills and then you have you have um RV bills like, right. like sinks breaking, furnace and shit like that. So basically what they do is they get that initial $50,000, they get themselves into a super sleeper. They run the super sleeper for the 36 months. Turning it in gives them the 50,000 again to get the next one. Right, because now they're thinking about those, unlike traditional trucks, they don't lose a lot of value unless they're super old. Right, so if you turn it in, that gives them the credits at the dealership to go right into another one. Yeah. And they just stay in the super sleeve or stay in the super sleeve. Some people do pay them off, like if you're looking at dudes like a, a Goose who built his mm-hmm. from scratch. Right. But Goose also is amazingly mechanically inclined. And you have to be, yeah. And if you're not, you know, you don't know how to ding around in an RV furnace. You're not keeping that bitch. Yeah, or what you gonna, or if you don't know how to fix a, a a backed up septic system, like I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, and let me tell you something. You think you think trucking bills are bad? Go to a place and get some RV shit done. <laughs> <laughs> so and what, oh, it ends, what it ends up doing, it puts you in a position where you have to start thinking about what type of lifestyle do I want to live. What I started realizing at spending this money, I started realizing. I am suffering through my job to live good for three, four days when I go home. Trucker Brown here. I'm just here to remind you that we are on Patreon and it does help out the channel. Thanks to all the people who sub to the Patreon this weekend. I appreciate you. New content is coming there. And these clips that I'm giving you are from the exclusive Trucker Report Live that I do with Phil, which is linked at the bottom on Rumble TV Uncut. So I appreciate y'all. Love the support. If you like the content, man, hit the buttons. Let me know. Thanks for coming to the Patreon.